Hello everybody, my name is Kingsticks. I hit Challenger on NA this season with a 64% win rate, 700 LP. So I figured I would show you guys my settings and I also have had a couple of you asking. Starting off the settings, we're gonna look at our hotkeys. If you are new to the game, I would recommend doing normal cast for everything. That way you'll be able to click on your ability and see exactly how far it goes before you then proceed to left click. If you have been playing the game for a while, then I would highly recommend doing quick cast all. That way, instead of having to click the ability and then left click, you can do it instantly by just pressing that key. Same thing with your items. If you don't do it on your trinket, for example, when I click four, it just hovers it. But if I'm trying to do it fast, I don't want to have to hover and then left click. I just want it to automatically just put it in there so I don't have to left click and waste that extra bit of time. That's something that I find relatively valuable, makes a little bit of a difference. I would take off both of these. I don't like either one of them. It makes it feel really awkward. For your abilities and summoner spells, there's really nothing you need to change in here. The only thing you really need to change is under player movement. I would recommend setting a key to your attack move click. Attack move click is a really valuable tool. Long story short, even if you don't click directly on top of your opponent, if you click close enough to the person you're trying to hit, you'll automatically go after them. So like here, even though I don't click on him, I automatically hit him. Even though I click past him, I hit him. Makes it really easy so you don't accidentally just click past someone and then do nothing. Really useful on ranged champions, still pretty good on melee champions for me. I have it on R, that's what I'm comfortable with, and then I have my ultimate on T. For you guys, you can use it on whatever you want to. If you're used to having your ultimate on R, you could go ahead and you put your attack move click on T or even one of your mouse buttons. You can go ahead and skip the display. This isn't important at all. Nothing needs to be changed there. Next up in the communication tab, there's one thing that you're gonna wanna add, and that is the, where is it? Area is warded ping. This isn't naturally bound to anything, so the only way to use it is if you come in here and set it to something. I have it on my mouse button, which is Alt-3. So let's say I'm playing bot lane, support, mid, whatever, my jungler wants to gank, I could say, yo, this is warded, this is warded, whatever. It's not too useful as a jungler, but you can still use it. Like if you're setting up a gank and one of your laners is trying to follow, you can ping it out. In general though, it is more useful as a laner to help give roamers and your jungler a little bit more information. That is actually something that's really useful and I would recommend it. It can really help to boost your win rate by at least a couple percent if you start using it consistently. You can skip the rest of this, this isn't important, and then we'll move on to video. For your resolution, ideally, you wanna have the one that has the star by it. That is the native resolution of your screen. Mine is in 1920 by 1080, so I obviously play on it at that. If you don't have a good computer, you might have to put it on something lower, but if you have a decent computer, or at least one that isn't too bad, you should be able to run whatever your your native screen resolution is. Next up for your windowed mode, I don't recommend full screen. If you do full screen and then ever try to tab out, it takes like six seconds. So if you're ever in game, do on accident, or if you do it just because of muscle memory, you'll be screwed and waste a lot of time or maybe even die. I find borderless is the best. It's the most seamless, it lets you tab in and out uh, really easily and you don't lose any performance. And it also, you can, you can stream and record on borderless really easily as well. So that's why I like this. For colorblind mode, I turn that off. I'm not colorblind. For hide eye candy, this doesn't really matter, honestly. Use relative team color. I usually like to turn this off. That way you just remember that blue is bot side of the map, red is top side of the map. If you have this on, it'll always make your side blue. So even if I was on this side, it would show my stuff up as blue. And I just like to know what side of the map it's on. It's not too important though. I always turn off the extra map accent. So whether it's arcade or pirate themed or whatever, I find it really annoying. Too much uh, sensation for my eyes. It just pulls away focus from the game. And that's not what I'm about. I'm a try hard. So we're gonna go ahead and disable it. If you like it, obviously keep it on because after all, it's a video game, you're supposed to have fun. I try to keep my graphics on medium. That way my FPS doesn't fluctuate too much. And I do keep my shadows off because they don't add anything to the game and they do cost you a lot of performance value. And once again, they don't really matter. I do put on character inking though because I feel like it makes the characters look a lot nicer. If you turn it off, they look really weird and just white. Ideally, you want to have as many FPS as possible frames per second. Now, if you are shooting for more than 144, you're not going to be getting much value. The biggest value you can get is hitting at least 60 FPS, that is massive. And then if you can get up to 144, that is even better. After that, 
the gains you'll see from it will be very, very small and you won't even really be able to notice it. So really shoot for 60 FPS if you have a bad machine. If you have a good machine, try to get up to 144. Even if you do only have a 60 hertz monitor, it does help. Trust me, I tested it out and uh, there's different videos you can look up on it why having a higher FPS, even if your monitor is a lower refresh, is still decent. In terms of anti-aliasing and wait for vertical sync, it's theoretically supposed to make the visual experience better. I've tinkered with both of them over various seasons with different machines and I have found them to typically increase your input lag by quite a bit and makes the game feel really damn clunky. Now, if you need this because your machine's super shitty and you struggle to run 60 FPS and there's a lot of like frame tearing and stuff, then sure, but if you can, I'd recommend really not using these. Next up is sound. Just with my sound setup, 40 is right for me on the master volume. It can be whatever is right for your sound up or for how loud your speakers are. For my music volume, I like to have it at half of the volume of my master volume. That way it is just background music and it's not something that overshadows the gameplay but it is still there so you don't go insane. Next up, I lower the announcer volume a little bit. She's really not that important. And then I just turn down the ping volume by five because those can get really annoying if they're too loud. You can turn down the pings all the way down to 50 to be honest. Oh, let's set it at 60, that's about right. And then obviously you don't want to disable all sounds and I prefer the updated music. The classic one's kind of dank. All right. Now we have the interface. I put the HUD on zero. This is your HUD right here. This section, this is your HUD. And you really don't need it to be big. The bigger your HUD is, the more of your screen it takes up. And you see how this all got way bigger and now you can see less on your screen. And it doesn't really do anything in that sense. So you might as well have it on zero. You should still be able to see your stuff easily. If you have bad eyesight, you can leave it around 30 or 40. Cursor scale, I leave it at 50. I like a large cursor, it's standard. Chat scale, I put it at zero. I'm not too interested in reading chat. Minimap scale, I put at 100. A lot of you know that I have played with it on 200 and even at 1.250. I would recommend just playing with it on 100 to 150. 200 is a little bit too large for me since I play on so many accounts. 100 is right for me, it's what I'm used to. And that way I don't have to go to the hassle of changing it on every single account I play on because I don't get too used to it. Next up, I make sure all of these are on. The summoner names doesn't matter. I mean, if you're trying to hide it or if you have a really long name like mine, you might, but that doesn't matter. Turn on screen flash on damage, champion highlight on center of camera. What that does, it shows this little V. So if you're in a thick team fight or if you don't know where you are, by holding it down, it'll help you find yourself. Really nice for team fights. Screen flash on loss of control. This is nice if you're CC'd. Around the edges of your screen, it'll do like a very, very light white flash. It doesn't really come out very far, but it's just helpful for you to realize what's happening. I think it's worth having on. Enable, leg enable legacy cursor. Eh, it's just for older players. I used to use the legacy cursor, but I've gotten used to the new one. And since it's standard on all accounts, I just gotten used to this new one. Always show extended tooltip information. If you're new to the game, sure. If you already know how things work, like monster camps, I wouldn't bother because this gets in the way. I would also recommend turning off show enemy tooltips. If you have this on, every time you're attacking the raptor camp, it's really annoying. So every time I hit it, it pops up on my screen every time your cursor is hovering over it and it's really spammy and might give you a seizure. It's really, really annoying to have that on. So I recommend turning that off as well. And you really should turn on show target frame on attack, show attack range, and show spell cost is really nice. As you can see on my screen above my Q, it shows 40, W60, 40, 100. So if you're low on mana, you can do some quick math and realize if you have enough mana for the burst. If you don't have this on, then you're gonna have to hover over each ability and read it instead of being able to have your cursor free. So I think that's really nice to have on. Enable line missile display as well. And then for the ability cooldown, I think it's really important to have it on minutes and seconds. That way you can do the math easier and you're spending less time thinking about it and knowing exactly when an ability is going to be up. Next up are two really big ones. Show neutral monster camps is massive. If you don't have this on, then as you see on the mini map, they won't show up at all and then you can't keep track of the timers very easily so obviously have that on and you should also have on allow mini map movement for obvious reasons for me i'd like to do my mini map on my left because i am left eye dominant obviously if you are right eye dominant play with it on your right that's just pure preference next up is show timestamps very important and mute enemy emotes is also really nice because a lot of times they'll just try to tilt you with those and that's 
nothing you need to be thinking about. Now, if you are playing for fun, obviously, sure, go ahead, but you're setting yourself up to be tilted. Next up is show all chat. I like to turn this off. Sometimes if I'm doing videos, I'll turn it on for my audience to enjoy, but in general, this should be off. There's nothing the enemies will be telling you that is helpful, and oftentimes, anything they are telling you that it's helpful, they'll say something like mids open, but then they don't actually open it and they ambush you and lame crap like that. So nothing valuable to be learned through all chat, just keep it off and obviously turn off the emote bubble display as well. And then for your combat techs, I was skeptical of this at first, but it is actually really convenient and enlightening to have all of them on. If you don't, you're missing out on a lot of information and there's just certain things you don't pick up on. So experience, mana, dodge, all of it, just turn it on. It's really valuable and it really doesn't get in the way at all. You'll even forget you have it on after a while. For our mouse speed, I like to keep mine at 50. My mouse DPI is at 1700 and my Microsoft mouse settings is just neutral. I turned off the acceleration, but it should just be the normal medium speed. Then for my camera move speed, I have it at 70. Your camera move speed is when you pan around like this whenever you push your cursor against the side of your screen. 70s are right for me if I'm ever needing to get some extra sight. That's about right for my hand, for how strong I am, for my mouse, all that stuff. And then for my camera move speed keyboard, that's only when you're using your keyboard arrow keys. Rarely do I ever do this, maybe once in a match, and it's kind of just for fun, so this one doesn't really matter as much. Next up, I like to turn off move camera on revive. If you're watching a fight, you want to teleport in, or you have a global ultimate, and you're dead, what will happen is right when you revive, it'll put you right on the fountain with your thing over you, and that can really mess you up, so I like to go ahead and turn that off. I feel like it's really not that helpful. And then mouse button drag scroll, this is also no good. Same thing with enable smooth camera, it kind of just adds acceleration into your camera move speed to where it starts out slow and then kind of builds speed. I don't like this, I liked it to move the a linear amount of distance based off of how far I push it. So I encourage you to turn off all three of these. Next for the camera lock mode, I like fixed offset, it gives me a better conception of where I'm at in relation to my enemies. using per side offset isn't that bad, but it's just kind of weird. So to show you an exaggeration of what it is, it's slightly favoring me over here on my screen whenever I lock it with that V. And then if I turn it back to fix offset, it centers me more in the middle of my screen. I prefer it. I think it's a lot better for attack move clicking and kiting on range champions especially. Next up, I like to have auto attack on. This one's a little bit controversial. Players either like it or they don't. This is to where if I'm just standing here, not doing anything, hands off my keyboard and someone walks into the bush, my character will automatically auto them if they're in range. I like that. I think it's really helpful uh, at different times. And if you don't like it, then obviously don't play with it. Next up, show turret range indicators and co-op and AI. This is a big no brainer. If you're ever in an AI match, it's really nice to be able to see how far the turrets can shoot. It's actually something that's helped me to realize tower diving capabilities. Next up is use movement prediction. I think this is a big no-no. I really don't like it. It makes it feel really awkward. It doesn't help at all in my opinion. Next up is attack move on cursor. This makes it to where with the attack move click that I showed you earlier that I have on my R, it'll attack whoever it's closer to. So for example, if I click it right there, it's gonna hit him even though I'm standing closer to this guy. Now, if I turn this off, then even if I click over here, it's gonna attack whatever's closest to me rather than my cursor. So having it on the cursor, I think is really, really valuable. That way your champion doesn't just start hitting a random garbage that's closest to it. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope these settings help you out. And remember, a lot of settings are just pure preference, but for the specific ones that I mentioned, such as attack move on cursor, attack move click, and things like that, I would highly recommend you slowly adapt them and work them into your normal gameplay. That is going to wrap up this video. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.